Ahmadiyya is an Islamic religious movement founded in Punjab, British India near the end of the 19th century. It originated with the life and teachings of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, who claimed to have fulfilled the prophecies of the world's reformer during the end times, who was to herald the eschaton as predicted in the traditions of various world religions and bring about by peaceful means the final triumph of Islam as per Islamic prophecy. He claimed that he was the Mujadid of the 14th Islamic century, the promised Messiah and Mahdi awaited by Muslims. The adherents of the Ahmadiyya movement are referred to as Ahmadi Muslims or simply Ahmadis. Ahmadi thought emphasizes the belief that Islam is the final dispensation for humanity as revealed to Muhammad and the necessity of restoring to it its true essence and pristine form, which had been lost through the centuries. Ahmadiyya adherents believed that Ahmad appeared in the likeness of Jesus to end religious wars, condemn bloodshed and reinstitute morality, justice, and peace. They believed that upon divine guidance he divested Islam of fanatical and innovative beliefs and practices by championing what is, in their view, Islam's true and essential teachings as practiced by Muhammad and the early Islamic community. Thus, Ahmadis view themselves as leading the revival and peaceful propagation of Islam. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad founded the movement on 23 March 1889 and termed it the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat, sometimes translated as Ahmadiyya Muslim Community. Since his death, the community has been led by a number of caliphs and has expanded to over 200 countries and territories of the world. The Ahmadis were among the earliest Muslim communities to arrive in Britain and other Western countries. Currently, the community is led by its caliph, Mirza Masrur Ahmad, and is officially estimated to number between 10 and 20 million worldwide. The population is almost entirely contained in the single, highly organized and united movement. In this sense there is only one major branch. However, in the early history of the community, a number of Ahmadis broke away over the nature of Ahmad's prophethood and succession and formed the Lahore Ahmadiyya movement which today represents a small fraction of all Ahmadis. Some Ahmadiyya-specific beliefs have been thought of as opposed to contemporary mainstream Islamic thought since the movement's birth and some Ahmadis have subsequently faced persecution. Many Orthodox Muslims consider the Ahmadiyya either kafirs or heretics. Origin of name The Ahmadiyya movement was founded in 1889, but the name Ahmadiyya was not adopted until about a decade later. In a manifesto dated 4 November 1900, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad explained that the name did not refer to himself but to Ahmad the alternative name of Muhammad. According to him, Muhammad, which means the most praised one, refers to the glorious destiny, majesty and power of the Prophet, who adopted the name from about the time of the Heg era, but Ahmad, an Arabic relative form which means highly praised and also comforter, stands for the beauty of his sermons, for the qualities of tenderness, gentleness, humility, love and mercy displayed by Muhammad and for the peace that he was destined to establish in the world through his teachings. According to Ahmad, these names thus refer to two aspects or phases of Islam, and in later times it was the latter aspect that commanded greater attention. The myriad distinguishing names adopted by various sects and schools of thought in Islam, he thus considered as innovations. For the Prophet of Islam had only these two names. Accordingly, in Ahmad's view, this was the reason that the Old Testament prophesied a messenger, like unto Moses, which referred to Muhammad. While according to the Quran, Jesus foretold a messenger named Ahmad, Quran 61-6, Ahmad also called it the Ahmadiyya Madhab, and it is permissible that this community also be referred to as Muslims of the Ahmadi way. Summary of Beliefs Ahmadi beliefs are more aligned with the Sunni tradition than they are with the Shia tradition, such as the five pillars of Islam and the six articles of Islamic faith. Likewise, Ahmadis accept the Quran as their holy text, face the Kaaba during prayer, practice the Sunnah and accept the authority of Hadiths. 
These are the central beliefs constituting Ahmadi Muslim thought. The distinguishing feature of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community is their belief in Mirza Ghulam Ahmad as the promised Messiah and Mahdi, as prophesied by the Islamic prophet Muhammad. Summarizing his claim, Ahmad writes, The task for which God has appointed me is that I should remove the malaise that afflicts the relationship between God and his creatures and restore the relationship of love and sincerity between him. Through the proclamation of truth and by putting an end to religious conflicts, I should bring about peace and manifest the divine verities that have become hidden from the eyes of the world. I am called upon to demonstrate spirituality which lies buried under egoistic darkness. It is for me to demonstrate by practice, and not by words alone. The divine powers which penetrate into a human being and are manifested through prayer or attention. Above all, it is my task to re-establish in people's hearts the eternal plant of the pure and shining unity of God which is free from every impurity of polytheism, and which has now completely disappeared. All this will be accomplished, not through my power, but through the power of the Almighty God, who is the God of heaven and earth. In keeping with this, he believed his objective was to defend and propagate Islam globally through peaceful means, to revive the forgotten Islamic values of peace, forgiveness and sympathy for all mankind, and to establish peace in the world through the teachings of Islam. He believed that his message had special relevance for the Western world which, he believed, had descended into materialism. Ahmadi teachings state that the founders of all the major world religions had divine origins. God was working towards the establishment of Islam as the final religion, because it was the most complete and included all the previous teachings of other religion. The completion and consummation of the development of religion came about with the coming of Muhammad, and that the perfection of the manifestation of Muhammad's prophethood and of the conveyance of his message was destined to occur with the coming of the Mahdi. Thus, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community regard Mirza Ghulam Ahmad as the promised one of all religions fulfilling eschatological prophecies found in the scriptures of the Abrahamic religions, as well as Zoroastrianism, the Indian religions, Native American traditions and others. Ahmadi Muslims believe that Ahmad was divinely commissioned as a true reflection of Muhammad's prophethood to establish the unity of God and to remind mankind of their duties towards God and God's creation. Summarizing the Islamic faith, Ahmad writes, There are only two complete parts of faith. One is to love God and the other is to love mankind to such a degree that you consider the suffering and the trials and tribulations of others as your own and that you pray for them. The Ahmadiyya faith claims to represent the latter-day revival of the religion of Islam. Overseas Ahmadiyya missionary activities started at an organized level as early as 1913. For many modern nations of the world, the Ahmadiyya movement was their first contact with the proclaimants from the Muslim world. The Ahmadiyya movement is considered by some historians as one of the precursors to the African-American civil rights movement in America. According to some experts, Ahmadiyya were arguably the most influential community in African-American Islam until the 1950s. Today, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has one of the most active missionary programs in the world. It is particularly large in Africa. In post-colonial era, the community is credited for much of the spread of Islam in the continent. Articles of Faith Ahmadi Muslims subscribe to the same beliefs as the majority of Muslims, but with a difference of opinion on the meaning of Katam and Nabin. The six articles of faith are identical to those believed in by Sunni Muslims, and are based on the Quran and traditions of Muhammad. Unity of God Ahmadi Muslims firmly believe in the absolute unity of God. Acknowledgement of this principle is the most important and the cardinal principle of Islam as interpreted by the community. All other Islamic beliefs spring from this belief. The belief in the unity of God is thought to influence a person's life in all its aspects and is believed to have much wider meaning and deeper applications. 
for example, elaborating on the oneness of God, the Quranic verse, there is no all-encompassing power except God, is believed to negate all forms of fear with the exception of the fear of God. It instills a sense of complete dependence on God and that every good emanates from Him. In general, the belief in unity of God is thought to liberate believers from all forms of carnal passions, slavery and perceptions of earthly imprisonment. The founder of the community writes, The unity of God is a light which illumines the heart only after the negation of all deities. Whether they belong to the inner world or the outer world, it permeates every particle of man's being. How can this be acquired without the aid of God and his messenger? The duty of man is only to bring death upon his ego and turn his back to devilish pride. He should not boast of his having been reared in the cradle of knowledge but should consider himself as if he were merely an ignorant person, and occupy himself in supplications. Then the light of unity will descend upon him from God and will bestow new life upon him. It is further believed that the Islamic concept of oneness of God inculcates the realization of the oneness of the human species and thus removes all impediments in this regard. The diversity of all human races, ethnicities and colors are considered worthy of acceptance. Moreover, it is thought that a belief in the unity of God creates a sense of absolute harmony between the Creator and the creation. It is understood that there can be no contradiction between the Word of God and work of God. Islam recognizes God as the fountainhead of all excellences, free from all imperfection as understood by the community. God is recognized as a living God who manifests himself everywhere and listens to the prayers of his servants. Distinctively, however, Ahmadi Muslims recognize that the attributes of God are eternal. On account of this, Ahmadi teachings propound the view that God communicates with mankind as he did before. Angels The belief in angels is fundamental to the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. They are spiritual beings created by God to obey him and implement his commandments. Unlike human beings, angels have no free will and cannot act independently. Under God's command, they bring revelations to the prophets, bring punishment on the prophets' enemies, glorify God with his praise, and keep records of human beings' deeds. Angels are not visible to the physical eye. Yet, according to the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, they do sometimes appear to man in one form or another. This appearance, however, is not physical but a spiritual manifestation. Ahmadi Muslims regards angels as celestial beings who have their own entity as persons. The major role they play is the transmission of messages from God to human beings. According to the Quran, the entire material universe as well as the religious universe is governed by some spiritual powers, which are referred to as angels. Whatever they do is in complete submission to the will of God and the design that he created for things. According to Islam, as interpreted by Ahmadi Muslims, they cannot deviate from the set course or functions allocated to them, or from the overall plan of things made by God. Books for Ahmadi Muslims The third article in Islam is concerned with the belief in all the divine scriptures is revealed by God to his prophets. This includes, the Torah, the Gospel, the Psalms, the Scrolls of Abraham, and the Quran. Before the advent of Islam, the history of religion is understood as a series of dispensations where each messenger brought teachings suitable for the time and place. Thus, at the time of their inception, the divine teachings sent by God concurred in the fundamentals, with the exception of minor details that were chosen to complement the time and place. With the exception of the Quran, it is believed that the divine scriptures are susceptible to human interpolation. Islam recognizes that God sent his prophets to every nation and isolated communities of the world. Thus, according to the Ahmadi teachings, books outside of the Abrahamic tradition, such as the Vedas and Avastar are too considered as of being divine origin. Among the recognized books, the community believes that the Quran is the final divine scripture revealed by God to mankind. The teachings of the Quran are considered timeless. 
prophets according to the Ahmadi Muslim view, the fourth article of faith in Islam is concerned with the belief in all divine prophets sent by God. Ahmadi Muslims believe that when the world is filled with unrighteousness and immorality, or when a specific part of the world displays these attributes, or when the followers of a certain law become corrupt or incorporate corrupted teachings into the faith, thus making the faith obsolete or in need of a divine sustainer, then a prophet of God is sent to re-establish his divine will. Aside from the belief in all prophets in the Quran and the Old Testament, the community also regards Zoroaster, Krishna, Buddha, Confucius as prophets. According to the Ahmadiyya belief, the technical Islamic terms warner, prophet, messenger, and envoy are synonymous in meaning. However, there are two kinds of prophethood as understood by the community. Law-bearing prophets, who bring a new law in dispensation, such as Moses and Muhammad, and non-law-bearing prophets who appear within a given dispensation such as Jeremiah, Jesus and Mirza Ghulam Ahmad. Adam is regarded as the first human with whom God spoke with and revealed to him in his divine will and thus the first prophet but is not regarded as the first human on earth by the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Contrary to mainstream Islamic, Jewish and Christian beliefs, this view is based on the Quran itself, according to the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Ahmadis believe Muhammad to be the final law-bearing prophet but teach the continuity of prophethood. Day of Judgment The fifth article of faith relates to the Day of Judgment. According to the Ahmadis, after belief in one God, belief in the Day of Judgment is the most emphasized doctrine mentioned in the Quran. According to Ahmadi Muslim beliefs, the entire universe will come to an end on the Day of Judgment. A position also taken by all other Islamic sects and schools of thought. The dead will be resurrected and accounts will be taken of their deeds. People with good records will enter into heaven while those with bad records will be thrown into hell. Hell is understood by Ahmadiyya as a temporary abode lasting an extremely long time and not everlasting. Much like in mainstream Judaism and the views taken by Islamic scholars of antiquity such as Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Arabi, it is thought to be like a hospital, where souls are cleansed of their sins, and this view based on the Quran and Hadith. Divine Decree The Ahmadiyya Muslim community believes that Divine Decree controls the eventual outcome of all actions in this universe. Within the boundaries of Divine Decree, man is given free will to choose the course. Ahmadi Muslims believe that they will be judged on the basis of their intentions and deeds on the Day of Judgment. Ahmadis believe that science is the study of the acts of God and religion is the study of the Word of God and the two cannot possibly contradict each other. They believe that Adam, the prophet, was simply the first prophet and not the first human on earth, as understood by them being in the Quran. Ahmadi Muslims do believe in the theory of biological evolution, albeit guided by God. Five Pillars the pillars of Islam are five basic acts in Islam, considered obligatory for all Ahmadi Muslims. The Quran presents them as a framework for worship and a sign of commitment to the faith. They are the Shahada, daily prayers, almsgiving, fasting during Ramadan and the pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in a lifetime. Ahmadi Muslims agree with both Shia and Sunni sects on the essential details for the performance of these acts. However, in Pakistan Ahmadi Muslims are prohibited by law, and to some extent in other Muslim countries by persecution, from self-identifying as Muslims. This creates some level of difficulty in performing the obligatory acts. Although, Ahmadi Muslims from some countries do perform the pilgrimage to Mecca, they are not technically allowed under Saudi law.